Well, sidetracked on another little project. Need tooling to build stuff. So, getting a little project ready to go for the turret lathe. It's going to go on the on the bigger tool, turret lathe on the Sheldon. And I've got a little little run of parts that I want to turn out here. So, what I need is one of these in this size. <laughs> so, what these are is a little die holder. And I built these so back in 2019. I think I did a video on, video on these. This one holds dies, and this is for what size dies are these? These are for one inch dies, and then I built a couple for taps. And the way they work, you set them up in your turret tail stock. Tap sticks out here, or your die sits in here. When you feed it forward while you've got your tap sticking out, this locks your tap in place, or these set screws lock your tap in place. This can actually be used for a little, uh, for a um, little handle to start backing them off because they're manual. This one, this is the larger die holder that I did build for on the Sheldon here. Oh, quite a while back, it's been run a fair amount. And these actually thread all the way in. All they are is a quarter inch button head cap screw that's got a piece of hose over them so they're when they're on why they they screw up like that and after it's fed on there why you can use that to start backing it out until you can engage the drive dog again this i've got disassembled now because i wanted dimensions off of this one the bodies themselves are the same the um this body is the same for both of them and then this is all basically the same with the exception of this i'm going to extend it a little bit farther out and um use it for the for the die you know adapt it to the to the uh, actually these are going to be hex dies and the reason for this is i don't have a um this is a big enough part it has to be turned on the on the sheldon and i don't have a uh, die head set up the the this big enough to handle these and I've got a little sketch I'll bring you down here and show a couple other different ways these could be you can run taps or run threads on one would be in a in an acorn style die which is an option for me I actually like it better than I like this style I think and I'll be doing some stuff with that here in the future the uh, proper way to do it would be with a self-releasing die head like a DSA now this is one that I've got I don't know if I've shown it before or not um, I've never set this one up and used it it needs a little bit of work it's got a 5 8 shank where I need a 3 quarter inch shank on either the uh, Atlas lathe turret lathe or the uh, Logan turret lathe both will take a a, a three-quarter shaft so I'm probably just gonna sleeve this is what I think I'm gonna do with it and then it needs the release it had been broken off when I bought it so I'll be doing that this is set up for quarter inch but it's not um, it's not big enough to cut the threads that I need to cut so right now this has got a set of quarter 20 um, die heads in it or cutter heads in it so and the way it works is it's setting your turret lathe like this you run the lever over I guess you have to have it released got it set up like this you run the lever over to close your dies and then it feeds in to your stock until it hits the stop which there'll be a stop rod that extends out here when you do that why well, it automatically releases it and then you can just retract your tail stock turret so that's the ideal way of doing it like I say I do not have a die head big enough to, to do that Okay, so this is my little drawing, and this is just, I quickly drew this up in CAD. Not perfect, I don't have the drive stud sticking out in this, I didn't draw it in there. And when I rotated my head, well, I cut off these two angles, so it's kind of kind of wonky. But anyway, this is what I'm working on right now, is the body itself. And it's bored out just like that down inside, if we can see that. Okay, it's bored out right down in there and it's shouldered right in there so this will fit in there and that just is clearance for the uh for the shaft to stick through then we've got a shoulder on the other side so it's got a spring that goes in there like that and when this is all assembled that goes in there little nut that locks down on the top of it and then your assembly is spring loaded so it will feed in until it releases then it spins and uh, then you in my case I have to stop the lathe and back this out manually until that dog will release again then I can run it back and um, 
retract it fully and it'll dogs wanting to bump the tripod um, then it will fully retract and you can go out of the next station so you can do it without the spring and just have them actually in two pieces i'm gonna go ahead and take the extra time and do it that way they don't get lost separated anything like that so today i'm just working on the body so i don't know how much of that i'm going to show but i thought you might find the the uh concept interesting and i got a couple pieces of stock cut i'm going to uh, use this for the body and turn it pretty much the same way this is my piece of stock for the front end i'm probably going to extend this out a little bit so i've got a little more meat here that way i've got um, room that i can tap a little bit deeper than i would possibly be able to without uh, without doing that and uh, that's the plan on these the housing this this outer housing was turned out of aluminum and then it's locked in place both it's a press fit and um, then locked on with a with set screws in it one on either side so it doesn't come apart but i think i'm going to turn this out of out of one piece of stock so that's the plan i'm kind of playing this week i'm finishing up turret lathe tooling or the one piece of turret lathe tooling i think i shot some video of starting it showing what it was it's a die holder for the for on the Sheldon and um, I'm just finishing it up that's what I'm the project for the day we've turned out the the inner piece and the outer holder I still have to drill it and install the drive pins and we're going to cut a hex in this end to accept the standard hex die and this was the one still disassembled for a tap this is the one that I showed I built this quite a while ago and I've got these for the uh, Atlas and the Logan lathe with the three-quarter inch tooling on them so um, if I've already showed that video you know refer back to it oh I don't remember if I put it out there or not and um, if not you may see it at a later date you may not see it at all I shoot a lot of stuff that sometimes gets saved onto the computer or gets saved onto a storage device and I'll go back and review those and decide I don't like it it's not appropriate whatever the case may be so anyway that's what we're working on today one little bobble when I was machining the cutout won't make a bit of difference let me finish cleaning this up deeper the inside of my threaded holes and we'll take a look at it now we're back into design considerations when we do this here's our head here's our base plate I have to put my drive pin in here yet to release and then I've got to turn my little cap threaded cap which is this right here to go in there and the spring goes in and retain it and there's a little polishing to do on the inside I'm lacking clearance on the inside for my spring here for whatever reason but anyway those are just fitting issues this is our upper portion this is our hex that we turned in there and it's going to accept a die just like that and then I'll put probably two set screws in I've got three set screw holes around the side I'll probably run two actual set screws in there and then one will put probably a button head cap screw with a piece of hose on it like I had on on the other portion of it this is an ugly one here um, to use as a handle if I, when I start to back it back off of the threaded portion that we put on there now design considerations with this I could have used a round die set this up for a round die and I didn't I set it up for a hex and I did that intentionally and for me at this point in time it's for availability of dies my local tool store stocks hex dies that's what they stock so I can run down there and buy a hex die anytime I want like I say they're a stocking item for them they cost about oh, less than four bucks a piece I think is what I what I gave for the last 
half dozen that I bought from them here just the other day as I was setting this up. So consistency, I can always run a nice sharp die. I'm not chasing down or having to order a split die, round split die. Um, the advantage of a split die is I've got a little bit of adjustability. I can tune the, tune how tight my th or loose my threads are for whatever I'm setting it up for. But for this application, I think this is the best way to go. Now, the other things about this is I may very well have to take these dies and where the set screw goes in, I may have to take a carbide burr and dimple the edges of them to retain them. You know, going in and threading is not going to be a problem. When I go to back them out, they may want to slip. You know, I may have a problem with them wanting to loosen up or not holding tight enough to where they'll slip out. So what I'll probably do is just, if that becomes an issue, I'll just form a dog head or order some dog head set screws and form a dog head on the on the other screw that I've got going in to hold it, dimple those just a little bit and that'll pretty much positively lock them in there. So that's the thing there. I left this body extra long because I've only got so much depth back in there to get my thread depth. So the thinking was I could take and bore a little bit deeper. Um, this, is, this is a 3 8 die and that's probably the largest, within reason, probably the largest thread that I'm going to run in this head. So a couple more things to think about is with this setup am I going to have problems with the um, with the curl that comes off of those thread dies am I going to have problems with it packing in there and jamming up so what I can do is with this depth and everything I can go almost I've got about another three quarters inch of depth down underneath there what I will probably do and I may do it just to do it and make sure I have clearance I can very easily go in on this end and relieve that for probably half an inch and then if necessary I can go in from the sides and, and plunge a couple of slots on either side of this or on three sides whatever the case may be so that I can extract any chips that want to pack up in there so that may very well be what happens I'm going to go ahead and finish the rest of it get it assembled and I may try it I may just go ahead and open it up a little bit we'll see what happens anyway I thought it was interesting I thought you might find it interesting as to why I chose a hex die why I went to that hassle of doing that and um, as I said before I had a little boo-boo there I had the uh, I had this collet set up standing on end with this in it to cut the slots in there and I just had it held in my vise and on that one little boo-boo why um, it uh, wanted to, I didn't have it tight enough, it wanted to pull it. So that's why I've got a little boo-boo, won't affect a thing and uh, hopefully find that a little bit interesting. Alright, well when it's so cold out here that the lathe won't warm up enough to uh, drill a hole because the everything's so stiff the belts want to slip and things don't want to run and my hands are cold why well, we're going to assemble our little uh, our little um, turret lay tooling here our little die holder and then we're going in and sitting in front of the computer for the rest of the day we'll edit this video and we'll run some CAD drawings and we'll do a few other things in there where it's at least halfway warm so anyway let me bring you down here and uh, we'll show you the components here's our base with our pin pushed into it everything's fitted up there this is our hex uh, holder that we turned yesterday we drilled it for our pin on the inside for our drive dog pin and uh, it, now it's just a matter of putting it together we've got our our little back nut turned and everything's good to go so let's take a look at it get this done and go in where it's warm so realistically this is a pretty self-explanatory thing We've got this portion, and we may go back, we'll go back and we'll etch the ear and this and my name like I do on the other tooling. And uh, we'll probably run this through the bluing tanks when we're bluing, but I'm not going to worry about it for right now, I want to use it. So that part goes in. Our spring that we've already fitted to the right length and turned the end down square, it's going to set in there. We're going to add a little Loctite on here, onto our threads. Just a little blue Loctite so we can remove it again later. This will set down in here. Lock that into position. So it will 
feed in off of the tailstock will come up against the stop in the turret it'll continue to advance until it reaches the end of the dog and then it breaks free and it'll spin so then we'll stop it put it uh, get ready to put it in reverse we'll have to back it off a little bit until it re-engages on the end of the drive dog then we can throw the machine into reverse and it'll unscrew itself so there's the uh, there's the body of it the main the main good stuff and these are the this is the die I'm setting up in it initially and in two of these we're gonna put set screws I've got to go and get the get some shorter set screws I don't really think I need to talk to anybody from France that kind of sounds like it's a crap call okay so we'll get some shorter set screws to go in here this will go in here like that we'll put a second one in here and then we'll get another shorter button head cap screw and put a piece of hose on it just like we have on this one for our tap but for now and that will be our handle to initially start backing it off again so that's all there is to it hopefully that will work the only other change I may have to make and I've mentioned it before is I may have to dimple the, the die on those three points where it locks in just to make sure it doesn't uh, doesn't come out of there when we're backing it off anyway one more tool ready to go now we've got tap holder and die holder hopefully you find that a little bit interesting ideas for tooling in your shop comments or suggestions leave them in the comments section for me below and thanks for taking the time to watch guys